What's up, YouTube? Today we are having ice blocks. Ice blocks. <laughs> We're having ice blocks today. Anyways, that's not the topic of today's video. I'm actually heading out. I'm going to the hospital because I want to like check one or two things in the hospital. But I said, let me quickly. I said, let me quickly come in and just make this video. Um, we're going to be talking about Asherman syndrome. If this is your first time of hearing about Asherman syndrome and you want to know what it is about, please just sit down and listen, okay? All right, so I'm just I didn't want to make this video actually, but I'm making this video because when I was first diagnosed of Asherman syndrome in 2019, 2019, 2018, thereabouts. I did not know what it was. I have never heard of it in my life. I went online. I went on YouTube. Naturally, you know, you want to know what, you know, this syndrome is about. And to my greater surprise, I didn't see anything on Asherman syndrome. I didn't see much thing on YouTube. This is our YouTube. I didn't see much. I went online on Google and I searched and I read up a few things and I was still a bit confused. And I wish there was a video out there that like made me see that I wasn't going through this thing alone or like it was something that would come and pass or something like that so basically Asherman syndrome is an acquired syndrome what that means acquired because you are not born with it is something that happened as a result of something do you understand so in my own case it normally happens as a result of so many things but in my own case it was as a result of dnc's that i had and cesarean sections that i had so i've had two dnc's because i lost two pregnancies and I've also had two cesarean sections because I have two children and I had them via cesarean section. So a mixture of all those things led to me having what we call Asherman syndrome. So it's basically in the layman's term and in the way I understand it is when you have scar tissues in your uterus, aka your womb. Okay? So what are the symptoms of Asherman syndrome? The symptoms of Asherman syndrome include little or no period. If this is TMI for you, TMI is too much information. You can click out. But for you to be clicking on this video, I'm hoping that you click on this video because you want to learn something and because um, probably you're going through it and you want to know more about it. Okay, so it won't be TMI for you. So the symptoms include um, little period absence of period abdominal pain and infertility yes because you have scar tissues in there and so there won't be any space for your baby to implant or maybe if it implant you may most likely lose the pregnancy so those are the symptoms of it so in my own case i had little period like very scanty period my period wasn't coming as it should and i had to go to the hospital because you know it wasn't normal for me that my period wasn't it was coming as i went you like it wasn't missing i wasn't missing my period or anything it was regular it was coming when it was supposed to come but it was really really scanty and that was what, what led me to going to the hospital in the first place and when i got to the hospital i was asked to when i laid all my complaints and everything i was asked several questions you know which included my history with dnc and stuff like that and so I was sent for what is called, I don't know the full meaning of this. I'm not a medical doctor, okay? I was sent for HSG. So basically HSG is like an x-ray where you get, where they get to like check your womb and stuff. A very painful procedure. Um, I, I just have to add that. Like I, it was very, very painful. It was painful, okay? So I had to do that and then that um, helped them to diagnose me because they saw the scars and the tissue, the scar tissues and everything and then i was diagnosed with that and so how do you treat asherman syndrome you treat asherman syndrome most of the time with surgery you know you have to go in for surgery they have to like do use um let me not bite my tongue i hope i'm correct if i'm not correct i'm going to leave it on the screen okay he's direct to me I hope that is what it's called because one means removal of the womb and then one means what I want to say Is he his me? If it's not, I'm going to leave the correct one on the screen, okay? So that is, you know, where they use, um, where they make an incision and then they put a camera and they see your 
insides your uterus and everything and they are able to you know see those scar tissues and then use a little scissors and cut off those scar tissues literally or they can just you know just go in for surgery and they put you under you know you, you sleep under general anesthesia and they are just able to like guess where those adhesions are and they cut it off so that's how you get rid of Asherman syndrome medically there may be other ways maybe when you treat it traditionally and stuff like that but this these were the two options that i was given and it took me a while to actually like say okay you know what i'm going to go and get this done and i actually went in and i got the first surgery done mind you one surgery may or one procedure may not just be enough for you you may need to have one or two procedures before you can be completely cured from it and so i would explain all these things for me they also told me that at some point i may you know the scanty period i was seeing may actually diminish and i will not be seeing my period at all at all at all and then it will also make conception very very difficult or if not impossible difficult no they said they will make it will make pregnancy difficult if not impossible this was how i was told and so i had to make up my mind in 2020 just before we went on the lockdown i was like okay since they haven't seen that we may just do lockdown let me just go and do this surgery and then use the lockdown and heal and so i went and i got that procedure done in 2020 everything went well the surgery went well and stuff my parents started coming for like the first three months they were very normal everything was fine unfortunately after a while it became scanty again and i went back and i was told that i needed a second procedure that will you know for them to actually like you know of course i was told so at this point i just didn't think i was i wanted to go through it i've been trying to conceive for some time now some people did not know because i have two children i have a boy and a girl and you know they would always think that oh okay some people say manje was all this kind of comments i didn't get offended by those comments you know some people would say go and give birth now what's holding you ah this is your daughter you're not ready to you're not old enough to turn one and all those kind of thing or become like um have a younger one or something like that and I didn't get, I didn't really get offended by those comments because, you know, those people are saying it not out of anything, but maybe out of excitement or out of, you know, they're looking out for you. And yes, naturally, when you have two children, you know, most people will think you want more. And then when the second and the last child is like a certain age, they expect another baby. So I was getting that a lot, but it didn't really, I didn't really mind. Um, so in 2020, after I got that and I was told that it failed and I needed a second procedure, I wasn't ready to go in for all those things again. I was, at that point, I was just tired. I was like, you know what, let me just live my life. But this year, actually, I was, I was ready. I wanted to like get it over and done with. I really made up my mind that I was going to, at some point before the end of the year, that I was going to go and get that procedure done and just like rest. Um, but even at that, at some point too, my husband and I were like, we have two children, really, like, God has really blessed us. We have a boy, we have a girl, and all this kind of thing. So, we had gotten to that point in our life where we were like, you know what, let's not even bother. Let's just go with the flow and just enjoy our lives and just give the best to our two, our two children. Me, personally, I was really like, there. I was there where I could see myself having two kids, traveling with them, giving them the best, you know. I was really giving excuses and reasons why two kids is the best. Even though deep, 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 deep inside of me, I knew I wanted a third baby, but then I also felt that I needed to go and do that procedure. If you click on this video, you click on this video because you want to learn about Asherman syndrome. So let me not talk too much about myself. Back to Asherman syndrome, the symptoms include low, no period, or very scanty period abdominal pain or cramps especially when your period is supposed to start and then you don't see a period i don't know if there are other symptoms but these are the symptoms that i was told you can also like research more on that on the internet so yes these are the symptoms and if you're experiencing any of these symptoms you may want to go and check that out some women as well also don't experience any symptom whatsoever of course if you're trying to conceive for a particular number of months or years depending on your age and it's not working 
they may most likely send you for for is it a, a hsg and hsg <laughs> They will most likely send you for HSG because so when you go there and you do your HSG, which is the x-ray of the uterus, and you have scar tissues in your uterus, yeah, it's definitely going to be very visible. And if it's Asherman syndrome, they would also say that as well. So I needed to make this video because a lot of time that I was you know going through the internet, I didn't really see like somebody talking about it or somebody saying that oh you know what I went through it. It was mostly doctors who would come out and talk about it. I didn't really see actual um, patients or people who had it at the time. And yeah, so I just felt okay. I didn't want to make this video really, but I just felt I knew how I was feeling at that time. I may not be alone. There could be other people who had been recently diagnosed of Asherman syndrome or don't even know that they have it and maybe this video might you know lead them in the right direction so yeah so that was why I'm making this video and so in my own case because I was coming from there that was where I was coming from the whole Asherman no period when I eventually became pregnant with this pregnancy I did not know I was pregnant my whole mind I just felt okay is the Asherman because my period would just come and it would just be very scanty. This particular pregnancy, my I had something that was like a period, but it was like pam, like just just that first day. So in my whole mind, I just felt that oh, this is it. That day has come because I was told that at some point it may cease. The period may cease entirely, and I just at that moment in my in my life, I just felt like the only way pregnancy could happen for me was if i got that procedure done and to be honest we're not even doing the do like my mom was so busy with school like he didn't even have my time yeah i didn't even have his time like i was also traveling for work i think i traveled for work or something i was just very busy at that time and he was very very busy at that time so we didn't even you know how they say when you're trying to conceive because god trying to conceive is not easy but that's a different topic altogether it's not easy it's not like the same as you know when you're just you know having fun and just like feeling each other and stuff when it's when the sex is about i hope i'm allowed to say this on youtube but when the sex is about um um baby or making a baby is is a different ball game altogether <laughs> if you know you know it's a different ball game altogether really so it's not like as if it's easy like i said um so you know you have to tie things you have to like do it every other day they say do it every other day you know every other day means like today you skip tomorrow tomorrow you know like that you know so you always time everything um so but in this but you know i tried it all the while i was trying to conceive but i did all those things in the book raise your legs afterwards all those skinny cut it's not an easy thing it's exhausting really but in this particular pregnancy one i was not as i was not thinking of pregnancy we were not even like doing the do as we should honestly it was just once and that once was it like when i even that was why i think that was why i didn't think about pregnancy when i when the whole thing started because i had ashaman and the period came but it was just the one and it was really scanty it was even scanty than it used to be even though i had ashaman and then it stopped and so my whole mind was I am not going to have this anymore. Let me just go and get this surgery done. Like, how will I be at least my age? Like, my period will just cease, even though <laughs> period one or self is not like I see be sweet. But, you know, I was like, okay, let me just go to the hospital and get this whole thing checked out. I just felt I had been doing every other day, all these years, all these months, nothing happened. It's not just this once. But then, when God wants to bless you, <laughs> all he needs is just to be present. That's just, that's just all I have to say about that matter. So that was why I did not think about pregnancy, okay? You know, when I said in my previous video that this, was, this whole thing happened miraculously and I did not expect it and I did not even, like, in my wildest dream think about it, this was what I meant. So... That was just it. I hope this video inspires somebody. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Just in case you don't know what Ashaman is, you've never had it in your life. You know, I hope you learned it. You learned a thing or two. If you're also going through the whole trying to conceive infertility, secondary or whatever kind of infertility that you're going through, these are things that you may also want to check out because I don't think Ashaman is something that people talk about. I don't think it's like it's not like i don't know it's just what i feel just because i didn't see a lot of clips on it on 
youtube but i may be wrong so yes i just really hope this video you learn a thing or two and it inspires you and it makes it gives you hope okay they also said that most people that have Asherman syndrome most times pregnancy may be impossible it might be difficult it might be that <laughs> See, one thing I believe in this life, if something is meant to happen for you, it will happen for you. I was really at that point in my life where I just felt if I wasn't meant to have this baby, I wasn't meant to have this baby. I've already given into God's will, you know, let it just be the way God has planned it. And I wouldn't have felt bad if I had prayed and prayed and prayed and God didn't answer me. I wouldn't have like questioned God or anything. I would have just saying that, okay. This is what God wants for you. So I just want to also say that you can also have that mindset. Sometimes we pray and pray for something and eventually God does it at his, at his own time. And when he does it at his own time, we see it. If he, doesn't, if he ends up not even answering that prayer, there is always a reason. And when the reason all plays out, it becomes very, very clear to us. That's all I have to say so that this video will not become so long. So if you enjoyed this video and if I really, really do hope I inspire somebody, I really do hope I, I was able to like talk about this because I'm not a medical doctor, like I said. So I talked about it in the best way that I can. Um, if you want to know more about Asherman syndrome, definitely go to Google or talk to your doctor. Yeah, that's it for today. Okay, let me go back to eating my ass block in the back. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.